Hi, folks. Uh, good morning to you all, wherever you're listening from, Lagos, Abuja, New York, or London. My name is Kalu Aja. Uh, this is just going to be our 15-minute take on business headlines across Nigeria. And, of course, my analysis of what's happening in the Nigerian business space. So let's jump right into it, right? I have this first story, which is from The Guardian, right? Guardian is saying that the airlines are owing, local airlines' debt burden hits $42 billion. The summary, guys, is that the Nigerian local airlines, uh, Airpeace, all those guys, right, they owe about $42 billion. Uh, they owe FAN about eighteen. They own now the National Aerospace Management Authority about five. Of course, they owe the Federal Aviation Authority eighteen billion. This is for ticket sales, for terminals, and, and, and navigation. And essentially, the regulators have given the local airlines give or take about a month to sign an MOU and to clear out all this debt. So we have the international guys asking the Nigerian government to pay dollars or they'll stop flying. And we have the local guys being asked by the local regulators to pay up. Or, of course, they will not be. I don't know what they're going to do if they don't pay. But it seems like the airlines are pushing back. Um, they say it's tough for them now with high cost of aviation fuel and tough operating environments. Um, the regulators say, well, this funds the ticketing and cargo sales charges are being collected on our behalf. You are just a pass-through, and you should make that payment. So, I mean, it just highlights the challenges that are going on in the Nigerian business space, especially uh, for the logistics folks um, that have to do with just high cost of doing business. And this just brings another level of uncertainty, right, to that space. Hopefully, it can be worked out. I mean, ticket prices are already sky high. Um, so this is a sector that I hope it doesn't start to affect safety. It's one thing to talk about profitability of airlines. But I hope this doesn't then dovetail into the safety uh, of the airlines. We want the local guys to keep on flying without accidents that they've done. And we hope they can all come back and play nice and resolve all this. All right? Good. So let's go to our main stories. And of course, we, this is going to be like a double header. Uh, so we're talking about the, ga- the story here from the punch, talking about gas infrastructure. Um, the Minister of Petroleum, or the we say the Minister of State for Petroleum, uh, Mr. Timipriya Silva, is essentially saying that Nigeria will need about $20 billion over a decade or $2 billion annually to essentially, you know, actualize the decade of gas that President Buhari had declared, which is going to run from uh, 2021 all the way to 2030, the decade of gas development in Nigeria. So we need 20 billion, as it were, to actualize this. So Nigeria is talking tough and we want that money, right? So you want to really ask yourself, this is... To me, it's priority number one. Like, we should have turned Nigeria into this gas-powered, you know, uh, manufacturing base. Be the China, but with gas. That would have been a clear strategy for Nigeria to get uh, differentiation, especially when we have the African Continental Free Trade Agreement signed. That would put a lot of pressure and competition to Nigeria. But no one has the gas in, in, in West Africa that Nigeria had, maybe even in Sub-Saharan Africa, if you take away Algeria, right? So I think Nigeria should have really done this gas master plan and gotten these investments locked in and turned the entire country into one big, massive China. I say it again, offer this gas, even if you want to offer it, quote-unquote, for free, right? Reduce the charges, attract manufacturers to come in here and produce. I read in the papers in Europe, Uh, aluminum smelting plants are shutting down because they need a lot of power. And right now, Europe is in this power uh, proxy war with Russia. So they are sanctioning anything to do with high power. So they need a base to come in and manufacture. This is how Ghana got the Volta Authority to fund uh, the the huge Volta Dam way back in the 70s. Nigeria should think that way, right? And we should start to sell 
our guys strategically, right? And say, listen, if you can come in here and set up a manufacturing location in Nigeria, we will give you guys at a quarter of the price that you pay, but you have to come to Nigeria and set it up. That to me, I, I think is a strategy that Nigeria should use to develop the gas industry, attract FDIs, and of course, create local jobs. So if you're more interested in this story, uh, that's on the punch. Gas infrastructure requires 20 billion uh, to actualize. I think it's doable, but Nigeria has got to have a plan and has got to be a bit serious in getting this done. All right, now let's move on to the next one, also from The Punch. This is the one I want to spend some time on. I left it till last, right? It's from The Punch. It says oil earnings dropped by 29%. So the Central Bank of Nigeria's report is saying that Nigeria's oil earnings are dropping or have dropped by 29% to just 790 billion naira. So Nigeria has to be the only country on earth that is recording falling revenues as oil prices are going up. And what's the reason? Uh, the reason is right here. We have this group CEO of the NNPC, uh, Mele Kiari, confirming that oil theft as a major reason for the dip in production and, of course, revenues, right? The NNPC is confirming that Nigeria loses 700,000 barrels a day. I mean, well, almost sound like a broken record. We talked about oil theft yesterday and last week, but we, this keeps on coming up, right? 700,000 barrels, this is from the NNPC, has been stolen and is stolen every day. So the numbers are not looking too good. Now, I mean, if you take the total revenues that Nigeria is making from crude oil, I thought it would be more. For the three months, January, February, and March, we're making about 487. That's less than 500 billion from crude oil. So crude oil has given us about 38% of our revenues. The rest come from non-oil um, uh, sources. So oil revenues are falling. And uh, the report, I saw something there. I'm not really sure what that means, but no gas revenues for that quarter and the last quarter. No revenues from gas. But the point is, Oil revenues are falling, right? And when you think about what we talked about yesterday, which was the budget that was passed, which was a one trillion a month projected deficit, where you have falling crude oil revenues, and the Nigerian economy is funded from the dollars earned from the sale of crude oil, then things don't now start to look a bit difficult for Nigeria, right? If we are losing nearly 700,000 barrels a day from oil theft, yet we want to borrow a trillion, there has to be a point where we can no longer borrow because there's just simply not enough oil to sell and pay back the debt. Then what do we do? You know, what are we going to sell now? Are we going to sell timber? That uh, train has already left the station. So the story really here is not just that the oil, the oil revenues are falling, but it's falling because of a reason that Nigeria can easily change. It's falling because of oil theft. Nigeria has been unable to stop oil theft uh, in desperation. They've gone back to a point an ex-militant uh, Tom Polo to guard the oil pipelines. I hope he is successful because Nigeria needs the revenues. But again, it just shows you the... Think about it, guys. Think about this with, with, with me. Nigeria is the largest economy in West Africa and in Sub-Saharan Africa, literally the entire Africa, right? Largest economy, the most sophisticated state of Lagos and all that, right? But to guard the oil pipelines that generate, give or take 70, 80% of the, of the forex that this country needs to survive by imports and trade, we are pointing a militant to guard the oil pipelines. There is not the, that, that's our solution. A militant to guard the poor pipelines. We can think of nothing else. We have no army. We have no navy. We have no monitoring. No, we can't stop it. No, we just have to appoint. It, you know, it 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 boggles the mind. This is happening in 2022, and it just you have to wonder if this is not some um, grand plan to sort of like scrape the country dry before the elections and a handover. Uh, that would happen later in 2023. So the report from CBN is almost the same as we have read all week. 
falling revenues, uh, Naira revenues caused by fall in production. This is going to drive the deficits of the federal government. And when the federal government borrows more, it's going to drive inflation, increase the interest rates in the economy, uh, which would then, of course, crush the middle class. Minimum wages are going to get crushed. Fixed income earners are going to get crushed simply because Nigeria cannot defend pipelines in their territory. This is not an attack by a foreign army. It's an attack by an army within. And I suspect that army wears suits, uh, not camouflage. Guys, that's really the, the main uh, stories that I have for you today. I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm searching in all the papers you know, for good news. I'm seeing investors lose $18 billion as the Nigerian stock exchange dips by 0.07, right? Uh, overnight money is contracting. Uh, not a lot of good news, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we do like to give, leave you guys with something that is positive, but we can only report uh, what we see. So, I mean, if uh, you can chime in and we can take one or two callers and then we'll call it a day. But the point is, the economy, the outlook is cloudy. It doesn't look good. And we're not getting clear signals from the chaps that are in charge that they seem to know what to do or, or how to take us out of where we are. We seem to, uh, to have abandoned, you know, should we say, governance as it is right now, that's how what I'll call it. Because um, if you can't get the pipelines that are static, pipelines are static. Then really, what are you uh, in office for? So I think we'll take one or two comments and then we'll call today. Uh, who do I have? I've got Umar and Kachi. Kachi, you can unmute. What's on your mind? Good morning, Mr. Kano. Hey, catch you. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Catch you. Go ahead. What's up? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, catch you. You seem to have issues with your microphone. I'm going to go to Umar. Umar, what's happening? Talk to me. Let's get this party rolling. Umar, what's happening? Hey, Umar going once, Umar going twice. All right, guys, we seem to have issues with our network. We're going to just shut it down for the day. We'll try to keep it at 15 minutes top. I uh, hope I've given you guys a bit of context to what's happening in Nigeria for now. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, we should have better news. I'm always a positive guy. And we should at least come back to you guys with something uh, positive for you guys to take with you. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, you should be good. Take care.